to order if I could have an acceptance of the agenda, please. So moved. And I have a motion and a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. First, are there any walk-ins tonight? Okay. Not seeing any. Soon as Tricia is ready, I guess that's up next, the report from the town administrator. Thank you. Um, I have a number of items, so many that I listed them, so um, I'll try to be as brief as I can when I got through them. First, um, I'd like to publicly announce that we've settled two union contracts for the professional staff and the support staff in town. The board voted to ratify um, these contracts at their last meeting and open session, but I did want to take a moment in my report to extend my uh, thanks to the union negotiating teams for both the professional staff and the support staff. It was a mutually beneficial and respectful um, process um, with both sides articulating their needs. And I think that the four-year agreements that we reach with both of those units um, benefit our employees and the value that we have with them working for us, but also for the town in moving the town forward and um, creating economies of scale. So I particularly want to thank the negotiating teams, as I mentioned, there for four years, and the uh, cumulative cost of living adjustments are 1.5, 1.75, 2, and 2. That brings four out of five contract settlements we have, and we're still negotiating with one remaining union. But again, I just want to publicly acknowledge both the bargaining teams. Um, the second thing is that you're in the process now of uh, Lorraine has started annual appointments. We've changed the process a little bit this year as far as asking for much more information from board chairs about any members that are interested in reappointments. But we also um, want to publicize even more than we did last year and encourage people to apply for any interested boards or committees they would like to serve on. I think oftentimes if people see that there aren't any vacancies, that they don't put in their names for interest, and um, we really want people to feel free to express their interest in any boards or committees. Their, uh, a letter of interest can just be sent to the Selectman's office. Um, there's the, um, uh, an article will be put in the Mariner soliciting people to indicate their interest. You will start doing your appointments the end of May um, and as we get the information back from board chair. So um, I just want to announce that we're in there. Just on that point, Tricia, um, I'd also like to know from the board um, or the commissions or committees uh, chairs of, uh, of their members, of, um, I guess you could say attendance. I'd like to know whether yep, they've actually on gone the or not and how many they've missed. I think that's very yep. important for reappointment. That's on the form. And I think it's a, you bring up a great point. Just because someone was on the board last year or last term does not mean that they're automatically on the board for the next term. So if you are interested in something, a lot of people would, would like to serve on two different boards. So it may be an opportunity to move someone somewhere else and move other people in. So if you're interested, please apply. I don't want to get you bogged down, but while we're on the subject, we sometimes stick to the six-year rule, sometimes we don't. So is that something that we might want to ask? Uh, Trisha and Lorraine to ask. Yeah, we can note that. To, yep. You know, I mean, sometimes we, at times for different reasons, you know, we've looked the other way or just continued. So, so well, that's another like, reason we're encouraging people, as Tony <coughs> said, to apply, even though there might not appear to be a vacancy. Because of the six year rule, sometimes folks have gone over because there hasn't been any interested folks to step up as and indicate an interest. Yep. Great. Thanks. Um, the next item is the Revenue Committee. I, uh, under the Charter, have the ability to appoint ad hoc committees um, to report back to me on certain town actions. I've asked three people to serve on the Revenue Committee. This is the very specific committee that the Board's talked about in the past to look at ways to write down the cost of the public facilities master plan. We're getting close in December to looking at the public safety building in the new middle school. So the revenue committee is charged with looking at all town revenues and expenditures and debt in a way to see how we can minimize the total cost of that project to the taxpayers when we're finally ready to go. It's being chaired by former selectman Joe Norton, who's head of municipal bonding at Harbor Coastal Bank. Jeff Burns, who works for Morgan Stanley, I believe, who is on the advisory committee, and Dave Capel, who is the chair of the capital planning committee and works for 
Merrill Lynch. So they're outfitted not only by their own career work in terms of looking at these long-term revenue and debt scenarios, but also um, have a familiarity with town government and, and what the town is dealing with in terms of other monetary issues. So they will be meeting and um, reporting back their findings. Nancy will provide any information that they need, um, and I'll keep you updated. Um, the Department of Revenue study, um, as you know, we have the Department of Revenue doing a management study looking at two very specific areas. One is the organizational structure of the town, and the second is the time frames associated with town meeting and the budget cycle and the operating budget. Two folks from DOR were here all day today. They've met with um, myself, Sheila, all the department heads, the finance director, uh, met with Sean as the board chair, Maura Curran as the chair of the advisory committee. Uh, Mr. O'Toole met with them, phone conversation with Mr. Danehy, and they will be following up with phone conversations with Mr. Vignani and Mr. Murray. Um, so they, that, that, that's their field work. They also left with a variety of documents, the charter, the bylaws, the town budget, and we'll be working on a draft report as well as follow-up information over the next several months. Um, you included in the packet, I believe, is the items pending, which you haven't seen before town meeting. Now that town meeting's over, we sort of get back to the rest of the business of the town um, and some things that have been on the back burner. So that gives you a snapshot of um, what we're working on. Um, but along those same lines, I did want to advise the board and publicly state that I will be gone for the next two weeks, uh, starting next two weeks, the next meeting um, from May 12th to the end of May. And um, Al ba Bangert will be acting town administrator during my absence. So we met today and he'll be working on some of these issues as well. And the final thing that I want to talk about that's not on the schedule is town hall will be closed from 8.30 to noon tomorrow for mandatory staff training for um, ALICE training. And that is for uh, everybody in the building to be trained by the Situa Police Department in active shooter um, situations. I should know the acronym for ALICE. It's alert, inform, counter and evacuate, I believe, and I probably missed a letter. But um, we will be doing that for this building tomorrow. The Chief of Police feels very strongly that staff in every public building uh, receive this training, and it's already been done in some of the schools. So we will reopen at noon. Um, and apologize for any convenience. That's been a web blast, and I just tweeted it. But um, very important training that I commend the Chief for insisting that we do. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Does anyone have any comments or questions? I saw some of you guys circling stuff and underlying stuff. No. All right. Just, just a couple okay. quick things. I think this is great, Tricia, when you give us this, you can see all the pending stuff that we're working on. Um, a couple things that were on here just for dates. Um, we're going to get our tablets on m next meeting. Yes. I think that's great. So we're going to be transitioning to try and be paperless. Um, Lorraine, I'm sure you got your hands full of that. Um, the wind turbine data sampling, do you know when that is going to occur again? Um, well, first of all, folks might have noticed the turbine hasn't been operating the last few days, but should be operational tomorrow. They had a part go. Um, but the data sampling, again, the wind conditions have not been right under the original protocols. I know the Board of Health met a few meetings ago to consider expanding some of those protocols. I don't know what the status of that is, but I can check. Okay. But it is still in the way it works. It's still right. It's timing. still ongoing. Yes. Um, uh, just on that point, it just seems like it's taking. I'm just only putting my an awful long time to find the optimum sampling, and yet they were able to get the sampling before they actually when they did the testing before they it went up. It, it's just at some point they we got to figure something out because it's been over a year. Sixteen months, I think. And I feel bad for the residents up in that area who've been waiting on this and relying on it. Um, so I don't know what. Uh, I'm not mistaken. Uh, didn't they change the speed and wind direction, and they changed some of the parameters so they could get a test done? And I thought 
they've they did a test, but I, I could be. They've mistaken. done one test, um, oh, but it's one? not okay. not nearly <coughs> enough. The the sampling it's not general sampling. It's a very narrowly defined sample when the wind direction is a certain thing. So what's happened is because it's taken so long and the conditions haven't presented themselves. There, there's been a request to widen the protocols for the sampling, and that's what I don't know what the status is with the Board of Health, but I'll find out. Yeah, I agree with John. I, I'm only saying because I'm thinking like in the next two months, then we should have some kind of somebody coming in because I'm like, is it because all of a sudden the wind hits the right way, then they have to call the engineer, the engineer can't do it because the engineer's on something else, so they can't get the, uh, the instruments out. I, I tend to think we really gotta figure this out and sample it under the optimum conditions, if if that's the problem. If the yep. problem is the wind hasn't been blowing in that direction for a year and a half, which I find hard to believe, then, you know, we, we got to, because I think we owe it to those people. No, I, I think it's a great idea to have them come into a meeting just to give an update. Yeah. Right. And the other great thing on here is the RFP that we have for Wi-Fi in the harbor. You know, I know Bill's working on that, and that's in the, you know, when that, I was in the harbor just the other day, and, and that's going to be such a plus for the citizens and for the businesses down there. So i um, glad to see that's on the top of the list. Then it, Tony? Yep. And the only one question I had, then we'll move on, Tricia, was um, Superintendent McCarthy was going to come in the 13th, or is he coming in? He has a conflict. They're coming in the 27th. 27th. All right. So to give us an update on where they are with the junior high school. Great. Okay. All right, moving on, uh, we have a scheduled item. Well, we're pretty close to on time with the Water Conservation Week proclamation. John, I see here, is here from the Water Resource, Co Resource Committee. And it's actually, a, if you would give us an update, and then I'd ask Marty to read it into the record if he doesn't mind. No problem. Okay, except that he got stuck doing it last year. He's and I clerk. think he needs to share it because He's I actually clerk. put five points in there and I think you need to really scold Selectman Murray not being here because I wrote one for each of you to read. <laughs> you can worry, worry of, you know, you can work out your own management between yourselves, but I just want to be fair to Selectman O'Toole here. Because we're actually drinking water. Sean, no, I'll read it. <laughs> That's fine. Probably should not. All right. All kidding aside, really, thank you very much for uh, <laughs> thank you very much for allowing uh, a few moments of your time on the agenda. My name is John Clarkson. I'm chairman of the Situate Water uh, Resources Committee, and uh, for the past couple of years now, we have been celebrating Drinking Water Week, which uh, next uh, is going to fall next week, May fourth uh, through ten. Uh, we have a couple of things that we want to make sure uh, we're joining uh, a number of communities across the country in celebrating Drinking Water Week and we just want the citizens to take a moment to realize uh, what goes into uh, protecting these resources. Uh, it's an opportunity for the committee to thank everyone who came to town meeting and your support as well uh, for the new Water Resources Protection District that was recently passed. And uh, the Water Week itself will culminate uh, with a big celebration at the uh, Situate Water Treatment Center on Saturday, May 10th. We're going to be offering tours of the facility. There's going to be displays set up about the new Water Resources Protection District if people would like to come by and learn what this means. There is a map here in Town Hall. We'll have a map down there and maps to distribute to people as well. There's going to be updated information on the pipeline replacement uh, that's going to be beginning, uh, if not this week, next week, I believe. It's already, begun. it's already begun. There we go. There's the man. Hey, Kevin, how are you? And um, also, uh, the uh, families who come by uh, will be able to, uh, will be handing out, we have a limited number of water conservation kits available to them so that they can uh, take steps to. Uh, lower their water bills and uh, help conserve water and protect it for uh, future generations. We'll also have information on some research the North and South River Watershed Association has been doing in conjunction with our uh, water department on increasing the capacity of our reservoir as well as uh, increasing uh, flows to, uh, to encourage fish habitat. Uh, into our reservoir. In fact, there's uh, a herring run that was recently refurbished right by the reservoir and people will be able to go tour that. I want to pick up on your fine town administrator's comments that uh, we as well are looking for members to participate in our committee and if you'd like to come meet other committee members and talk about what we do and perhaps uh, 
some good people from the community would like to join our community, uh, our, our water resources committee, we would encourage them to do so. So that's, that's pretty much my pitch. And, uh, and I thank you for, for considering this proclamation to really uh, start up uh, Water Week with a big bang. Thank you, John. All right. Tony, would you give it a stab? One minute. Sure, go ahead. <clears throat> sure. Whereas for more than four, 35 years, people throughout the nation have celebrated Drinking Water Week, recognizing a unique opportunity for both water professionals and the communities they serve to join together, recognizing the role water plays in our daily lives. Whereas the town of Situate values its precious and limited water resources, and whereas the town recognizes water's critical role in ecological health as well as economic development, and whereas the citizens of Situate have recently adopted a comprehensive water resource protective district bylaw, and whereas the town remains committed to preserving and protecting the quality of our vital water resource for future generations. The Situate Board of Selectmen hereby proclaim May 4th through May 10th to be Drinking Water Week. Thank Cheers. You, Thank you, John. Appreciate Thank you. It. All right. Okay. Moving on. Next is a one-day liquor license for the Inley School. Is there anyone here from the school? It was scheduled for um, 7.20. I don't have a problem voting it if they're not here. How do the other members feel? Move. Want to make a motion? Sure, I guess. Move to grant a one-day beer and wine license for lavishly done catering and event planning for event at the Inley School on May 17, 2014 from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Second. Okay, motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Next is a common VIC license to be held at the, the quarter deck from the Lucky Finn Cafe. And that's is it the one that was tabled, Lorraine? Yes, that one was tabled. Okay, all right. That's why you have no information on it. All right. A little early. It's not a public hearing. I suppose we, if the board is okay with it, we can go on to the outdoor entertainment license by TK O'Malley's. It's supposed to be 735. First, I think there are two passes. First, there was a, a one day um, <coughs> license, outdoor entertainment license for the um, sidewalk for an event. Maybe we can start with that. Trisha, do we have to wait till 7.35 or can we No, do it? it's not an advertised public hearing. If right. the folks are here for it, obviously I you can do it. I see TQ I see some neighbors and stuff. If, you know, if everyone's in agreement, then we'll, we'll go ahead and I'm sure we'll be talking about it for a few minutes. So um, with the board's permission, why don't we go to the one day outdoor entertainment patio license for TQ O'Malley's, if that's all right. Sure. Walter or um, anybody would like, would you like to speak on this? It's Hi, Sean, how are you? Uh, how are you? Could you just, I, I certainly know who everyone is, but if you wouldn't mind identifying yourself. Absolutely. Uh, Jeff Delisi from Orenberger Associates. I'm here with uh, Walter Collins, who's one of the owners of TK O'Malley's, and Rich Linehan, who's a GM. Um, why don't you guys talk about the one-day license, guys? Or it's, the, the, it's for this coming first Friday, um, just to have a single singer up front. During the early hours. That's just what I thought it was first Friday. Yeah. Anyone else have questions? Five to P it looks like from 5 p.m. till 9 p.m., Mr. Linehan? Yes. Right. And it's, it's Situate Harbor Art Walk. Is that really just first Friday? Right yeah. Here. yeah. And is it going to be in that indentation? In alcove, correct. Yeah. So yes. sidewalk still, people can pass yes. down and. Great. Move, right. uh, Please. Yeah. Move to grant a one day outdoor patio entertainment license to TK O'Malley's for one acoustical player on May 2nd, 2014 from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. on the sidewalk in front of TK O'Malley, uh, O'Malley's for the Citrate Harbor Art Walk. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Now moving on to the second half. It's an outdoor entertainment license. It looks to me like it was a Renewal, you had it at one time, I don't know if it yeah, was it, it, uh, a year they, ago. It was 2001, and uh, the application was filed. They weren't certain whether to put it as a renewal or a new license, but I would think that it's probably a new license. Okay. I guess I'll open it up to you guys first. Yeah. The board can ask questions. I'll open it up to the audience if that's okay. Sure. Um, 
What we're planning to do, as you know, the, the, the patio out there is probably one of the most beautiful spots to be in, in the harbor uh, on a nice summer night. And uh, essentially what we're looking to do is, is uh, have some entertainment for that you can pretty much converse over, dine over, hear one another, nothing crazy. Uh, we would like to limit it to uh, three pieces or any combination of three instruments and a singer, but no more than three in total. Uh, and the time that we were looking to do this uh, would be uh, Sunday through Thursday uh, uh, until, uh, what was it? Not Sunday through Thursday. Well, we were looking Friday and Saturday until midnight. And then Sunday through Thursday until 10. So when do you want to give, give us a full hours? From what time to what time? Sunday through Thursday from? From noon until. Noon to 10. Yep. And Friday and Saturday night from uh, until midnight? That's correct. Does that necessarily mean that you'd? Uh, uh, I'm corrected I think it was until 11 o'clock so uh, let's during the week use what's on the license before yep. the board oh, where's the which is 11 on all of them on Sunday through Thursday and midnight on Friday and Saturday that's the application and that's it's what we're seeking yes yes so Sunday to Thursday 12 to 11 and Friday and Saturday 12 to 12 correct does that mean that if I went down there Friday or Saturday afternoon, not necessarily there'd be someone outdoors playing. It just gives you the license to do that. Right, we don't necessarily mean that they're going to have people. And we're not going to have entertainment all the time. We're not a family right. for that. Right. It's just uh, to cover, you know, it right. might be a Friday afternoon, it might be a uh, Friday night, or, you know, but not a, com a combination of different times, but not a consistent every. Right, okay. Right. And we feel that this would be an attribute to the to the harbor businesses. Uh, we think that uh, you know there's been some competition recently in the harbor, and and uh, we want to make you know we want to make sure and certain that we were able to utilize our patio to the full extent we're able to. Okay. Yeah. Questions or comments from the board? The midnight thing scares me a little bit. I think that's a bit late. Um, because of the situation where your patio is, I mean, on a nice calm night, you've got houses right across from you. So I think the, the midnight thing, I think it, it's, um, I could see 11. I, I just, uh, I, I think midnight would be a little bit on the, on the late side. The reason why we were going with midnight is uh, that's what our liquor license has for our last our last service. So, right. and that's but I think you have, you have it anyways for at least indoors. You have it from twelve to twelve. Um, inside, yeah. yeah. Inside. And yeah. Here's where I'm coming from. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm not adverse to doing it because I think, frankly, you have an opportunity to maybe um, augment your clientele, with providing them, like I said, with to sorrow, an opportunity to have some nice acoustic music. Um, I think we as a board, at least my position on it is, if it can help your business, I'm willing to help do that, providing it does not impact the greater residential area. Mind you, you're in a business district, so the people who live in the business district have to realize that that's the reason why they live there, and that's the reason why we have a business zone, so that they have to adjust to the businesses. Um, but if it turns out that people are applying, you know, Stairway to Heaven and, you know, you know born in the USA and, uh, you know, um, uh, the big heavy rock groups, you know, playing this music, it becomes a problem for them, becomes a problem for us, it's going to be a problem for you. And I think you guys know that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, you know, from my perspective, I have no issues with suggesting that some form of acoustic uh, music on the outside, you've got it on the inside, so you can have your music, use, uh, you know, whether it's a, a band or you've got the jukebox, but I'm saying inside, you can close it off, it's quiet, air conditioning's on. But I think from the outside, I'd like to take the same approach we've taken with Tesoro, which was in close off at 10. So you have the opportunity to be able to perform if there's some kind of acoustic on the outside. Um, I think it was, we had it until from Wednesdays and, and oh, wait a minute, Monday through Wednesdays, 
from 4 to 10 p.m., and then Thursday through Sunday we had from 12 to 10, the shutoff being 12 o'clock, I mean being 10 o'clock in the evening. Yeah, the only, I was thinking about that, I actually looked at that license coming in, and uh, the only thing I could think there is, I'm not sure whether the board took it into consideration, but in the Tesoro situation, uh, that is right on the edge of a, of a business district. Here we're kind of, you know, I mean, there are, in the, also in that situation, you have uh, many uh, hotel, for lack of a better word, residences above it, and there's some residents on the opposite side. Here we don't, we don't have that. Um, I'd agree with you, Jeff, but the only problem is you're on the edge of the water. Yeah. Sound carries pretty quickly right across the water. So the people who are going to be pretty much impacted by it are going to be the ones on First Jericho. Cliff mm -hmm. and certainly That's maybe right towards Cedar Point. Mm -hmm. um, maybe some reverberation hanging back mm -hmm. upland. So I, my, the reason why I'm saying it is I know their neighbors here are totally against it, but I would rather see increments here to see how it goes, how you manage it, and, um, and say that, you know, Certainly from the outside, it shouldn't be mo any more music at that point until, you know, we see how it goes. The volumes will be controlled by the management, and they'll be on top of that the whole time. The other thing is we serve later food later than anybody in the town. We serve till midnight. So we're stopping the music, you're saying, two hours before the, even the people can order food, we're trying to get to kind of go together with each other, whether it's indoor or outdoor. But we've always served till midnight, and we continue to serve till midnight for the food. You're right. I'm not saying, um, Mr. Collins, you're wrong. I, I, the only reason why I'm, I'm worried is that I'd rather see it incrementally happen. You haven't had the license in 13 years. So I would be inclined to say, why not try some smaller steps to see how it goes? You're talking about two hours. You haven't had it for 12 years, 13 years. Um, I would say test it to see how it is. Um, if, if we begin to get a lot of complaints, then we'll, we'll we rediscuss it. On the other hand, and I'm not talking about the one person who's going to call and say I complain about it, because there are always going to be that type of person out there. Um, but um, I don't know. That's just my view on it. I, I'm only one of four right now. But I just think getting to that first step, let's see how it goes. I mean, we're only off by two hours, I think, if I'm not mistaken. How about one? <laughs> <laughs> Tony, do you want well, to before I speak? Well, let's are you done? Uh, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to negotiate. I want to keep things fair and square for every businesses that are in the harbor. I think it's fair at that point uh, because then we're going to have somebody come back in and say, well, guess what, now we want to have something in between. I think having kind of a more of a even keel here approach to it. I mean, the reason why I'm, it sounds to me like you're trying to get music out there till midnight. I'm like, is it booking, is it booking a problem for getting somebody to, to play, perform from 6 till 10? Well, I wouldn't think so. Well, uh, we'll find out, I guess. Yeah, because you get a lot of you get a lot of people down there. I mean, you know us. I will go down there <laughs> from six on, you know, till seven or eight. I mean, it's I haven't been into. Usually four hours they'd like to play. So if, you, if it's still <clears throat> ten, then it's six to ten. It's you know, in the afternoon it'll be three, you know, three to seven or something like that. But if you get them to play longer hours. It's the, the time they play is, you pay them according to how long they play. So. Gotcha. But we're not doing anything with cover charges or doing any kind of big bands or any kind of, it's more like Jimmy Buffett, James Taylor, that type of thing. Yeah. I have pressure. I know it wouldn't make any sense, you know, because it'll become a problem. And I, I realize, you guys, I'm not going to tell you who to book. But um, the hours are just the only thing I'm a little nervous about. That's all. I want to make it work. I want to make it work for you guys, and I know the neighbors are going to be very upset about it. We've gotten some responses, um, and so I'm just trying to see what would be a, a good way that's going to be a win-win so that in a year from now, nobody's going to be complaining, and then you might say, you know, can we bump it up? Go that route. But those are my thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we talked about this when we talked about the inn having theirs, and I was a little reluctant with them because I think there was an outdoor entertainment for – a number of years because of the complaints and because of the harbor and because of the, the neighborhoods around there. But once you give it to them, I think Evan said, you know, it's going to open up the door. It'd be unfair not to give it to you for at least the hours of operation that they have. Um, so I, I, I agree with John in terms of that. Um, you know, I think if you had three people playing even acoustical music and the wind blowing the right way, it's going to travel. And 
but there's a lot of children that live in that area, and I think I think there would be complaints. And I think we want to get in a position where we're not where we're going to succeed, and we don't get complaints right off the bat and have to cut something short, you know, prematurely. So I think I agree with John in terms of let's let's start out with the same era, uh, thought process that we had going with the inn. And let's see how that benefits you and see what what the feedback is from the community and then go from there um, in the future um, you know hopefully like John said you do have an indoor license that goes another two hours afterwards I don't think you're gonna have two bands at one night where they're playing inside and outside so they can uh, you know move inside and, and play another set or whatever they want in there um, so I, I agree with the hours you know to match the hours that we have with the existing outdoor but even your setup right now I'm sorry to, you've got the um, on the glass wall where it's like um, I forget sliders, if the doors um, either bend like a um, fold like accordion or whether they are sliders but I assume you'd keep the band there they, they're going to hear them out on the deck then you can close it up you could still continue to get that extra two hours Walter by doing it that way the people in the summer want to be on the deck it's the open air we've right. put uh, plastic liners down along the, the front of the building but then you're keeping all the heat in and they're not going to cross ventilation, so we, we, we you know, try and we'll continue to try to do anything that, uh, that helps in that manner. But then you got the AC issue. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure okay. out your solution. Uh, yeah. Right. First of all, I'll, I'll speak for Rick Murray because I had a conversation with Rick Murray today. He called and said that he's, although he's not here, he's in favor of it. Um, the hours, he had a little bit of a concern with, but he didn't specify to me what he'd like to see the hours. So just wanted to put that on the record. My first comment is a question to Rich Lenian. How long have you worked there? Uh, since 1994. How many hours a week do you work? It varies. Uh, well, 60. Well, Walter, I work 70 plus. <laughs> <laughs> I find it funny. Yeah, I'm over 50. <laughs> and the reason, and the, there's a reason I ask these questions, and that's because if the residents, anyone has a problem, he's no stranger. He's there all the time. And if they have a question, they have a problem, he's very accessible. He, he will have to do something about it. He's not strange. He's not new to this, this uh, operation here. Um, the summer months are short. All right. After, not a lot happens before Memorial Day or after Labor Day. All right. 10 o'clock, I think. And I'm, you know, looking out there, 10 o'clock I think is a little early sometimes. 12 o'clock is a little too late. I might say to split the difference and call it 11 o'clock. Um, but having what John said, you know, if, if they don't call Rich and they call one of us, then, you know, we'll, you know, we're going to have to call you guys and, and, and deal with it. But I just think, I was thinking about this since, you know, I read the agenda. You know, there's a fine line. And I just think we, ha you know, we have to help the businesses. It's different than the inn. It's different in a couple different ways. That's closer to the residents sitting in the middle of the room here. It's right beside them. They have residences right upstairs. This is a little different. Yeah, sound can travel, but so can people on their boats and everything else. There's a lot of people. You know, every everyone's outside in the summertime. The noise level, mm -hmm. the ambient noise level is much higher in the summer, I'm sure, if we walk down Front Street at different times of the night from summer to winter. Motorcycles. Yeah, yeah, trucks, you know, deliveries, whatever, whatever the case is. So I would tend to go with <coughs> from 11 o'clock, maybe 10 and 11. I would split, split the difference. And I'm, you know, I'm just throwing that out there to see what the board thinks. And again, I, you know, I caution you guys. And, and I think it is, it's, it's not midnight, but um, I, you know, and start there. I mean, we're coming into the summer season now. You know, if it was halfway through the season or if it was in the fall, it, you know, obviously the fall, not much is gonna happen in the fall, winter, and spring. But uh, I just think that we need to somehow help these businesses, provide them with some tools to make a go of it. They've been in business a long time, and they give a lot back to the community. That's all I have to say. And if, at this point, if we don't have anything else, all right, I'll, then I'll open it up to the audience. One, one sec, Tony, I think has... No, no, I was going to suggest... Oh, right, okay, yeah. you good? Everyone all set? 
Um, the gentleman, is it Mr. Lynch? Yeah. Is it, could you Henry just Lynch, say your name and address, yeah. please? Henry Lynch, 15 Beaver Dam Road. Okay. And uh, the applicant has stated that it's a beautiful spot on the deck down there, and, it, and they like people to enjoy it. I live at 15 Beaver Dam Road when there's a loud music. It comes up, and I cannot enjoy my deck. And I certainly have feelings for all the business people. We just had a study that said maybe we should do more down in the Greenbush area to get our business and our base up. I'm not trying to hurt anybody that's in business. As a resident, I know we have a trade-off because if there's good business, it affects my tax rate. I'm completely understanding that. When we have loud music, I'd like to know how many decibels are they gonna be playing? And, and what that music comes up right between the end and the White House down near the cross, this thing comes right up under my deck. And it's aggravating when the music is loud. And you talk about Soros, and you gave them a license just recently. When it was there, and it was the Black Dog, or whatever it was down there, never once did we hear, the music was not amplified outside so that it was loud at all. I never, and I'm on my deck all the time, I never heard them once in all the years they were there. Not one time did I hear them all the years that they had the music downstairs, whether it was the brown boys or whatever it was. We don't, we don't need a lot of noise at the house. We don't need our neighbors to be disturbed. You don't need an 11 o'clock opening. Most of the restaurant people are gone unless it's bar people. What time do they serve their food? And uh, we as residents have just as much compassion and want the businesses to do well. We wanted the inn to do well. They remember they wanted to put condos there? We'll do anything to keep that place there. Wonderful neighbors, they were very accommodating. Drop over if there's something wrong, like we would drop over to the manager here and we'd say, hey, this, this really is not right. We feel that way, but we don't need loud music until 11 o'clock at night. My bedroom picks everything. I can hear the guys on the pier talking. And I bought the house because I wanted to be here not because I was against businesses, and that's how I feel. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, I'll let everyone will get a turn. Um, woman over here. Hi, Marjorie Leary, 199 Front Street. I'm sure you know how I feel about this. I'm very nervous speaking about this. I was here when the dog watch came up. You listened to us, you denied it. You then gave a license to, to Sora, which I was a little confused about. And I told you at the time you turned down the dog watch that uh, TKs would be asking for a license, and they have. I don't, I think it's abominable. I wasn't notified about this. I am the closest private residence. I didn't have to be notified. I know that. I found out by accident. I notified as many people as I could, First Cliff people, Harbor people, but you're very well aware that the Harbor is apartments. Um, we're living there full time for 150 years. I don't really care what TK does. I just don't want to hear them. And I can hear them now with their inside license, with their doors open. Business is business. If he can't make a business without outside music, then there's something the matter with the business. I don't think we need one more bar that's hooting and hollering in Situate Harbor. That's how I feel about it. And I'll be very disappointed if you go along with it. And I'm not going to be calling the police or you every night. It's ridiculous. By the time the police get down there, they try. The noise is down. The people have left. I'm wide awake. Why would I do that? It, it shouldn't be up to me to be calling you and the police and saying, oh, I'm wide awake. This should be something as a town that we're trying to make the harbor a better place. You don't go to Nantucket and listen to this. Thank you. Gentleman sitting down. Ed Larry, 199 Front Street. My wife has told me to be quiet, so I'm, I'm risking a lot of here speaking. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Danny, you made a comment about the fact that they do have a, an indoor license and, and they've got that, they can close their doors and uh, provide the music inside. I'd like to point out for the last two years we've been uh, subjected to the fact that they have left those doors open, very clearly open, 
and their speakers were piled right outside those doors. That is an absolute truth. I went in there and asked them twice, and they, I was told, well, if you're inside, we've got an inside license. Mr. Linehan can shake your head, but those speakers were right next to those wide open sliders. So this, this consistent pattern of disregard for what's right. You talked about the fact that it's summertime, and that's when we have to make money. Summertime is when our windows are open, when we're trying to uh, enjoy the peace of our homes. The fact that I can't have a conversation in my house, he can't have a conversation with his tech, so that they can sell more alcohol. Is, there has to be a point where they, have, they deliberately try to skirt the issue. I was appalled when they put those sliders in, and I walked and I saw those speakers there. They have a, a karaoke in there. They have a DJ in there doing trivia on Thursdays night, Thursday nights. An absolute disregard for their license. Their license says right now, no, nothing on the patio. So this isn't a renewal we're going after. It's a change in their license. Is that not a fact? Oh, it's been said? since 2001. The okay. license, their current license says in capital letters, no entertainment on the patio. I, I look at it a little, yeah, right. I look at it a little differently, I guess. I haven't seen those speakers outside, all right? I look at entertainment, outside, right I, I look at entertainment as being entertainment on the patio. That's why I, I look at it, I'm sorry. I, so it, having the amplifiers blasting out is, is, according, is in accordance to their license? I haven't seen it, like I said, I haven't seen, I haven't been down there to look at it, okay? Uh, there was another hand, yes? Carol Fitzgibbon, um, I live on Roberts Drive over in Westcliff. I'm also the Vice President of the Westcliff Association. Um, I'd like to just point out that you have this different standard for the Maritime Center. Last year, I had a uh, anniversary party, a uh, wedding anniversary party on June 1st, and I had music, and the music was Skip Toomey, who used to teach in, the, um, in Gate School for many years, and he's also at the uh, Tinkerson and the Snug, it's an Irish band. And I was told, and I spent a lot of money on this party, both of the decks were tinted and skated, there was liquor, and I was told emphatically that that band could not play on the deck, that it had to play inside, and that the decibels had to be reduced, and the reason for it was not to disturb the neighbors. And the time cut off was 10.30. So that was the understanding, and believe me, I wish that they were able to play out in the deck. It would have been much nicer. It would have been nice, much nicer for my company, but that <coughs> didn't happen, and that is the policy for the Maritime Center. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to mention is that um, I, I, I don't have such a problem with the weekend aspects of this, but I have a great problem with the Sunday through Thursday or Monday through Thursday because people work. Not everybody over on First Foot or around here is retired. And I have a husband who is a defense attorney and right now he's trying a murder case. When he works, he goes to his home, his home now, he'll be in bed at 8 o'clock, he gets up at 4 o'clock and then he starts appearing again. If there is music on till 11 o'clock through the week, and that music, and it moves, it, cl it crosses right over the harbor, over the first cliff, we can hear Cole Parkway, as if it's right in the backyard. It will prevent him and other <coughs> people who have responsible jobs from working. If they want to do this on weekends, that's fine. And there is a difference between TK's and the inn. TK's backs squarely against the harbor and that music will travel. It won't travel as much as the end, and it will affect all of First Cliff, across the harbor, and go over towards the White House. And I think that that's a complete inconvenience and an imposition on those of us who would like to enjoy our decks in the summertime without a battle of the bands, which we're going to get with Cold Parkway. And this does not prevent now the mill walk from doing the same thing. They have decks, and that's the next step. So I think I would prefer that the board maybe allow them to just do a weekend to begin with. 
And if that works out and it's not too, too noisy and you don't have opposition from neighbors who are saying it's too noisy, it's too late, then maybe they could institute the Monday through Thursday and try that maybe at 10 o'clock. But as it stands, I think it's uh, far too broad. And I think that the Maritimes policy, if they're making people who rent that space not be able to use a van on the decks and have it closed up by 1030, I don't think it's fair that you're going to allow the O'Malley's to do something different. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, um, all right, I'll start. All right, okay, no, all right. Okay, the woman in the back. Uh, Elizabeth Petit, 172 Edward Foster Road, first clip. <laughs> it, would it be possible to do as Carol said, which would see how it went on a weeknight or a weekend? Because I do think having it seven days a week is a lot. You know, sound carries right across. You can hear the yacht club. I can hear kids splashing in the pool when the wind blows that way or even on a still night. So it seems like a lot to ask us to be subjected to music seven nights a week, regardless whether it stops at 10 or 11. So would it be possible to see how it went, at least for weekends, to see? And, if, and also, when they say acoustic, that means that it's not amplified, correct? And you're talking about three pieces plus a singer, or three pieces including a singer? I wrote down three pieces total. Total. All right, yeah. and as and far as acoustics, I, I'm not a music person. It has to be. I think with acoustics, something's plugged in. Well, we were, we were, anticipating you know perhaps an acoustical instruments but you know it's common practice for for them to be plugged into an amplifying system it's not like we're going to turn it up to 10 or, or you know just enough in other words the whole concept of what we're trying to do is be able to have entertainment out there but allow the people who and the patrons who are enjoying that patio the ability to actually hear one another and converse. We're not intending to utilize uh, um, acoustical instruments essentially for electronic purposes. Um, we, we, we anticipate that not only would we be, um, Calypso is one of the concepts that we were thinking kind of more of a laid back kind of Caribbean feel and that has like a, a little steel drum uh, that's associated with it, so that was something along the lines of what we were, what we were thinking as well. But again, not this isn't. Uh, I mentioned battle of the bands. We're not, we're not looking to have full bands, full drum sets, electric guitars, stuff like that. Um, I wanted to point out also is, you know, we've. While we, while we, while I'm hearing complaints about our indoor facility and what we're doing over there, the subject of this is outside, and we have never received a violation of our indoor entertainment license since we've had it. Um, this is a business district, uh, and there's probably should, you know, we think that there should be a balance here, and we recognize the fact that we share this district with residences, but. You know, we're also allowed to operate this business as of right in this district. And we, you know, we recognize that we have to come before this board as a licensing authority in that regard. But this ought to be something where this board balances out, you know, the, the interests here. And, and we're, we're not suggesting that, you know, we're going to be doing a full-fledged, you know, musical operation here. And, and, and I don't think you will, all right? Um, if, if, if I can cut you off there, Jeff, if that's all right, Tony. I mean, I, I, think, I think what happened was, there's a reason why you haven't had your license for 13 years, because the board stopped allowing outdoor entertainment. And what we did is, a month ago, or whenever the new inn came before us, um, we discussed it and the board decided to implement that again. Um, and. We were hesitant, I know I was, I think a couple other members were, about the time and about the residents and, and their impact from it. So, um, you know, that's really what's going on now. Now, it'd be, it'd, very, it'd be very difficult for us to only give the in a license and not you a license. It, and we, I know I talked about that, that this is going to happen, and whoever mentioned in the back is probably right. The mill is going to come up next week and, and ask for it as well. So now you've got three entities, all with bands, 
and gosh, you said Calypso in my heart. So I'm like, that's not, <laughs> that's going to carry all the way to Hingham, you know, with that steel drum. So I think we really have to make sure that we keep it in tune with acoustic. You know, you mentioned James Taylor and Jimmy Buffett. That's one guy with a guitar just singing and trying to, you know, have harmony for, for your restaurant. I don't think we want to get this too big because what's going to happen is they're going to call and we're going to revoke all the licenses. I mean, that's, that's what I see happening. So I think it's really within your guys' good judgment and the other entity's good judgment to, to do that. And all of these people are hesitant to get up and talk to us right now, which is even more hesitant to call the police on you guys when they do see the speakers or they do think that, that it's being amplified louder than they were <coughs> and that intentionally thought. So I think we just have to be conservative to start this and see where it goes. Um, because we are, we've changed the dynamics of the harbor, and you are right, it is a business district, and um, but all these businesses were fine, you know, not fine, but they were um, sustaining themselves before we made this judgment a month and a half ago or what have you. So, uh, again, I would just say let's be conservative to the start, let's see how it goes, and then, you know, expand it from there, because it is, it is going to get loud, and there are going to be other people asking for it, and you know, again, I just I just see three bands within a block of each other, all fighting for airtime. Um, would you consider Thursday through Sunday as an option? I mean, I know you're missing Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but I mean, I think yeah. Thursday through Sunday you're getting the weekend, and uh, or I think that's what um, not what we had for the other. I'm just they raise a salient point. Um, yeah, Thursday through Sunday. I'm like. You well, I don't know. think they're going to play on Monday. I mean, I doubt you I are mean, anyway. We're saying That's seven days saying. a week, yeah. and you can do it inside calls, anyway. Right. Tuesday, then we come in in front of the board and say we have an a, a, right. a, a, right. another person in the band in, for St. Patty's Day and through the times. But it's almost like can be like a separate item. Separate yeah. item. I was just looking at St. You got July Fourth. You got a Heritage Day weekend. You know, Memorial Day, Labor Day weekend. As far as the license, the, the old license is the outside. Um, we had one incident, a uh, board member came to me and asked me if I minded temporarily turning in the license and it be brought up at a later time. The license said accordion and guitar, and it was kind of a, out, outdated anyway. So I said, sure, no problem, but we never did till now. We went 13 or 15 years, and, and it was never, we were never in front of the board. Right. Okay, the board, a member just called me, right. asked me. There were a couple of hands out in the audience. Is it all right if we, all right, I'll, I'll entertain a couple more, especially the ones I haven't heard from. Okay, I'll, I'll start with you in the front, if you just identify yourself. Well, I was behind Dalton Parsons on Howard Heights Road. The consequence that concerns me might happen if you're having loud music at night, are uh, the patrons that show up in their Harleys. 10 o'clock at night, boom, boom, boom. It's already an issue where I live. I just don't think adding more of that on a nightly basis would be a But it's not loud music. I mean, it's... I'm talking about the Harleys when they leave. No, no, I'm just saying the music that they're having is going to be acoustical, you know, know lighter I'm music. I'm also concerned with another component to offering music at night. More Harleys taking off. I happen to like them. I have one. I'm sorry. It's not mm. real loud. Well, but, if, uh, muffled, if you had a muffler, um, that would be great. Go down to Plymouth. It's oh. quite it, all right. It's 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 pretty neat when you all right. I mean the, the I, problem. I the problem. We, we you know, haven't we haven't had a big crowd of uh, bikes at night. It's at, during, during the, the day, day Sunday afternoon, the right. right? But she she raises a point. The the the, the, the clientele that might come in. Um, but you know what? The, the reality is this, and I'm not trying to be mean. This is a business. It's a business district. They have a right to run a restaurant, and you know what? That means a restaurant, and they have a bar, and they do both. It's just not for booze, it's for food. And they're trying to make a go of it. They've been around at least 20 years, right? I don't know, and I mean, and I will admit, they've been very charitable in a lot of events that a lot of people don't know about. So it's an even balance that we're trying to deal with here. And I have to tell you, if they can't make a go of it, like any business, something else is gonna go there. I.e., maybe condos, maybe other something else. But if you don't want that business, then you're subjecting yourself to potentially something else. So, you know, my feeling is, you know, we're trying to help the businesses because it's a business district. And the problem with the Maritime Center, it is not a business district. It's in a residential district. And the town controls it. So this is a lot different, shall we say. 
Um, but I am acutely aware of the neighbors around, which is why I'm asking you about Thursday to Sunday, because I'm inclined to say that I'm willing to accept that. Um, and then let's see how it goes and test it out, because it's going to be the first foray this year in over 14 years that we haven't had outdoor acoustical music. You're not the only one. To Sorrel's the other one. And yes, I do anticipate Mill Wharf or maybe even Rivas asking the same thing. But again, we need these businesses to succeed or you won't have them down there. And you're going to have something else, something you might not even like. The devil you know is better than the one you don't, so to speak. So, you know, it's not a residential area. That's, that's not our issue. It was decided back in the 1930s, and they tore down all those beautiful homes. The foster home was one of the last ones to survive, but all the rest ones are gone to build a business area, to be able to keep business here. And we know our business is only 3% in our town. So, you know, we talk about trying to support businesses. All I would ask the residents, and I know you disagree with me, and I re respect that, but let's test it to see how it goes. It's been 13 years. 2001 is what you said, right? 13 years, we haven't had it. If there are violations, then yes, indeed, we're going to find out about it, because you will call, the police will report it, and they know that. And I'm not trying to say that I'm looking to catch them. I'm just saying they're <coughs> responsible adults, business people, who know that they potentially could use, lose something that could help their business. So, you know, it's a matter of, of trying to work together. So I, I guess that's how I see it, and I know you guys may disagree with me, the neighbors here, but I just feel like I'd rather see Thursday to Sunday, see how it goes. Um, and certainly I think there is a point that, you know, yeah. you can play it indoors if they're going to have a band. Um, and let's see how that We're prepared to do Thursday to Sunday. Okay. All right. I'm just going to get two more hands that Same haven't time. spoken. The woman in the middle, if you just identify yourself. Jackson, 15 Beaver Dam Road. I'd like to just comment on what Mr. Vignani said about changing the culture of how the harbor. It's a senior business area. I think that it does change the culture. <coughs> and I'm living on in Beaver Dam Road, I'm up and down Front Street and certainly come in at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, and I see lots of people at TK O'Malley's. They've got a good business going, and I see lots of people staggering out of TK O'Malley's over my 10 years here. So I'm concerned about adding more business and more music to have people come sit around and drink more. I'm very, very concerned about that. I do think that there should be strict guidelines to start conservative, conservative guidelines if the board is going to pass this. And that means you're desperate. <coughs> I don't know how you measure any of that, but amplification is a big deal. Music, if you have music without amplification, I feel better about that, but I know that there's going to be amplification. So I think that we need to have guidelines, and I don't know how you do that with amplification, but that's up to you people to figure out. I think that that's a big, big thing. Thank you. This woman right. over here. Um, my name is Mary Alice Lauren. I live in 11 Conway Terrace, right beside the Maritime Center, and I do not live in this district. Uh, you're correct, there's the ambient noise, and actually you enjoy it. We hear people laughing on the boats. <coughs> we hear uh, occasional music from weddings. That's fine. But to have TK's is right there. And I like TK's. My husband and I own a business. We are not in the business, but it's going to change the character of the harbor. Boating is another commerce, an important commerce in this town. If boaters aren't going to want to be out there in the morning, if you're listening to that at night, you know, they want to sleep, get up the next morning, go somewhere. But that's my opinion. Point of information. All right, I'll accept <coughs> one more, then I'm going to point. Point of information. I'm going to make a comment. There's been a lot of conversation here about what the, I don't know what we're both voting on here. What are the, has there been a motion about the hours? No, there has not. So, no, John had mentioned, I think, a woman's response was the weekends, and I, you know, that's, we can set, I suppose, whatever we want to do. It's whether they want to accept it or not. So, and John had raised the point from, to, to a woman's point about weekends, and I think Jeff alluded to they could, it's, it's all about compromise, and, 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 and she raised a good point. I don't think the businesses, other than certain, like July 4th, John mentioned, if it falls on a Tuesday night or July 3rd, you know, that's a big <coughs> night. But other than that, it's, we, you know, we, we, think, we haven't said anything okay. yet. We haven't, you know, there's been a lot, there's been hours that have been all over the place. So having said that, if someone wants to try to make a motion, I'll accept a motion. Now, I think I've heard from everyone. 
Unless anyone else has something else sure, to Sure, I'll move to grant uh, an outdoor patio entertainment license to TK O'Malley's for up to three acoustic performers slash singers um, from Thursday through Sunday, starting at 12 p.m. until 10 p.m. Thursday, Sunday. What were those hours? From um, 12 p.m. till 10 p.m. <coughs> Nothing Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Nothing Monday right. through Wednesday. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second for John's second. motion? Can I, can I just uh, a right. point of clarification, second. John? Um, holidays, special days such as uh, the, the, the 4th of July and Well, the 4th is on Saturday, Saturday or is on yeah. Friday, so you're covered for that. Good. Well, May, yeah. Labor Day you're covered because that's on a Monday. Mm -hmm. As far as um, Memorial Day, I guess, is covered because that would be a Monday. Mm -hmm. That's the 24th. So you're going to be looking at maybe October or November and December, and I don't think you're going to be having anything outside during that time period. St. Patrick's Day, you know, if we have the weather we have right now, you, you may not have anything outside either. So um, for the summer, I think you're pretty much covered as far as covering major holidays. And if there's a major holiday other than ones we've talked about, then I'd ask that you come back and ask us for an Thank you. Uh, extension on it. Um, Tony? Just to further discussion, I, I think <clears throat> My thought is we should give them the same deal that we gave the inn. Which was what? Which is, I can well, there's the two, two major differences. It does include, the, it does include seven, it's Monday through Thursday, but it always ends at 10, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. I mean, there's no reason why these people should not get the same deal that the other people did. The other thing is, though, it says acoustic guitar music and singers. I don't know what three, where three came into play. I don't know where the um, other instruments came into play, but what we've what we offered these people is to have an acoustical guitar and singers for their events and here, here it is here i don't know if you have a copy of it I, yeah, just, yeah, that that's what that's i would recommend that we give them the same, same. exact thing that we give so, them it's monday through thursday yeah. till right. 10 right. and then it's friday through saturday through sunday 12 to 10. Right. it's the start time that differs right i think that okay. i i agree with you as far as consistency but i think they said they would forgo Monday through Wednesday. Well, I think they, I don't know that they said it. No, we did, we did. We will for I think they conceded, well, they sure, said, you, you know what, for the neighbors especially, so they do Thursday through sure. Sunday. Well, I would keep, I but would I then keep, keep the it the same. Right? and the singers and everything else the same. Oh, and excuse me. Yeah. Um, like the bands I have right now, the singers, it's usually like the McLaughlin Brothers is three guys. They all play an instrument. So is that limiting to like one guitar among? No, no. Okay. Guitars okay. and. With their for a total of Yeah, but you're, yeah. So, but there's not drums, there's not. Right. You know, it's there's not trumpets or whatever. It's it's just light right. music, which guitars and singers is what this is what we gave the other people. So, point so of I clarification: that's um, plugged into an amplifier with speakers as well. Acoustic? Well, I don't think it is. Point of information. One second. One second. Right. Out of order. What do we? What do we have at the end? Okay. It says, description of music to be conducted, acoustic guitar and music singers for events. All right. Okay. Listen, this would not. I think somebody may have said something. I, I've been indoor. I guess I'm not a musician, but I think sometimes the singer has a mic, but the guitarist, the instruments aren't plugged in, is what I think somebody said at one of these meetings. I don't know a lot about if it. If an electric I just, guitar is not amplified, it won't, you won't hear anything. So, I mean, it depends on the equipment a little bit. It still depends on the management to make sure what's coming in and what's being played. Yeah, the, I know the instruments are definitely not plugged into amps. I know that. For acoustic? -y. Yeah, for acoustic stuff. I know nothing about it. So, we just want to be, cons the idea is to be consistent with what? That's my thought. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, do you feel that John's motion is consistent with what you well, like? Just, if we, if he adds change? in the guitar, whatever the... What did I say? I said for... Uh, Thursday through Sunday, you said 12 to 10, three singers slash instruments. Oh, it's just singers slash instruments, right. You know, you know what? Um, we mirror the other way. I have to apologize. I'm going to rescind that because you know what right. I think I was looking at? What was I looking at? I just Maybe saw that. Indoor. Was I looking at... The, all right, we don't have a second anyway. If you want to, he had a second, but yeah, he's well, rescinding. I oh, know that's the one I was in. reading. I was reading. I'm looking at your. So he's withdrawing. If John, right, do you want to withdraw your motion? So I'll move to uh, withdraw my motion. No. Okay. 
Second. Second. All right, we have a motion to withdraw it. Okay, now we're starting all. No, all in favor? Second. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, you, so start now you're starting all over. Before you, so do you want, just hold off while you're looking for your, trying to get your thoughts. Jeff. Um, do you want this? Jeff? If. I think that's what he's looking it for. It sounds like, it sounds like Tony's about to make a motion that is consistent with the uh, previously issued entertainment, outdoor entertainment license. And two points on that. That's, is that, is that limited to, is that seven days a week or is that less than seven days a week? Seven days. Seven days. Okay. Hours. All right. So um, when John was discussing that issue, I was saying, well, we would limit it from Thursday to Sunday, but it was based upon, that statement was based upon what we had applied for. So if you're going to be granting it evenly across the board, then we're going to ask for seven days a week, just like what you gave to Soro. Um, and what that is, is Monday through Wednesday, 4 to 10 p.m., Thursday through Sunday, noon time to 10 p.m. That's, if I have this, if that's correct. Right. That's the license. Okay. All right. So. And that would take well, care of the holidays and all that's. Should be covered for all right. holidays. Thank you. All right. Do I have a motion now? I move to uh, grant TKs the same license that we gave to C Smoke. So Do I have to read let it? me which, try. Which, so which? for Monday through Thursday, hours 4 to 10, Friday, Saturday, and Sat, Sunday, hours 12 to 10, three instruments or three singers, no amplification. No, nothing. Uh, why don't I read it? So uh, I move to offer TKs the, the same outdoor entertainment license as C Smoke, which is Monday through Wednesday from 4 to 10 p.m. Okay. And Thursday through Sunday from, from 12 to 10 p.m. For description of uh, music conducted is acoustical guitar music with singers for events. I have a motion. Two. Before I ask for a second, go ahead, Jeff. All right, two questions on that is. Point of order. Second, oh, then discussion. Second. Right, okay. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll second the motion. So we have a discussion. Right. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> sorry to go out of order there. Uh, amplification. Uh, I just want to make certain that it's okay to be to utilize microphones for the singers, correct? In that circumstance? I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I'm under the impression, yes. Okay. But I'm not a music person, so. And so. then, and then, um, additionally, the Tesoro is four events, and we would we would be basically asking for that. Yeah, it's str scratch otherwise. the four events. Okay, thank you. And if we want to be clear, so instruments will not be plugged in, but microphones for singers will be. Okay. But that's not uh, one good. second. One, one second. One second. I'll, all right. Now I'm more confused now. So you want to change your motion no, no, I, again? I, I, no, I'm trying to define what acoustic means. All right. Good luck. Okay. Let me know how you make out with that. All right. Um, all right, so here's motion, here, uh, here's my only my thoughts on it. I see the thin the, the the distinction. So everybody understands, okay? What we've done in the past, we said acoustic guitar music, so acoustic guitar, with singers for events. Now, it seems somewhat vague because when you deal with acoustic, you think it's just somebody with a guitar, and yet there are situations where the guitar is there with a little amp, I guess, or a speaker, right. and sometimes it isn't, um, as opposed to like a a huge electric guitar that's playing loud speakers. The other issue is, do you put mics into that? So what we've granted in the past is we said acoustic guitar music to Tesoro. And, you know, I guess it depends how you read it. Reading this, I'd say there's no mics. But that's my prowess of looking at it. And acoustic, I think I take acoustic as being without any type of amplification whatsoever. It would just be a guitar. So, um, but I don't know the answer to that. And what they've asked was three acoustic performers so what they're asking is saying three performers not solely music to or not solely guitars um, so it's kind of interesting and begs the question of whether we have a policy on this I, but in any event that's what's going on and that's what we're trying to figure out so we're just trying to make it the same it's what I'm consistent yeah. I think the same play I'll, I'll, I'll so I say we keep the license wording the same, and the only question is what what does acoustic mean? 
And I, I don't know the answer to that. No, no, no. Right? Just, just, I, I, just, I, you all right? So, I, you know, everything else is the same. That, that's all I know. Um, if we get complaints, you'll get them. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to find a middle ground here. I see a lot of hands still up. I'm not going to have the answers for you tonight, and I don't know if anyone here has the answers. And I'm sorry if I, I, I if, if you do, I just have to hear from someone else. I, all right. Um, I respect what everyone said about being able to sleep at night, get up the next morning, go to work, and I think we're all trying to find a, a balance here. All right. So I have a motion. I have a second. Can I just and say one thing? We could test them both out. Here you have acoustic guitar music and see who complains about that, and then we could test out the three acoustic performers and see at the end of the year which one has more complaints, if any, and if they work. Then you'd say, you know, you an idea. All right. I think so, on that right guys, now. I think you, you heard enough. I mean, we, we were here for a long time, and, right. and, and, I, and go back to my original point to the people in the audience. You know, you may disagree with me or not, but, you know, and, and to John's point, if these guys are, are not new here, and, and they've been around a long time, and I think they really will respect your privacy and, and, and if you have a problem. You know, if you are not satisfied by going to them, you could go to the police station or, or, or call us. But, you know, it's, it's, you know, put yourself in our position here. We're trying to, uh, you know, can I, balance this. Can I just try and clarify, why don't we, do we feel comfortable defining acoustic as no amplification of the instruments, but you can sing into a microphone. Yes. No, you, you can't. It's it's uh, we have. It's like the Millwall amplification when Matt Brown plays there. Doesn't he play his guitar? No, you know it's a regular guitar, and I think he plays it into a microphone, and that's amplified. But he or sings using a microphone. I don't know well. the difference. He does sing using a microphone. All right. As but, the McLaughlin brothers would. All right. And I, I don't really see the difference. You know, I I don't know. I'm the first to admit it. I don't know anything about it. You know. What I do know is if it's too loud and the neighbors have a problem, we'll hear and you'll hear. Okay. All right. So how do you want to define it? Well, we have a motion, a second. I, it's just you know. as written in the other one. Right. Um, yeah, all those in favor? Mean, what does that mean? I don't know what it means. Right. You're going to find three, out. You'll have three people playing, whether they play guitars or, you know, and I, I don't know. It's just it's, it's, it's what's going to be in the license, acoustic. Trisha, do you know any more about this stuff? I so acoustic I means nothing. To enhance the sound, it's an often plugged into an amplifier. Yeah. Yeah. And acoustic means nothing. Right. Right. That's what we give the other people. All right. <laughs> okay. And now what do we want? May to? I make a suggestion or? Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, I guess I'm just kind of piggybacking a little bit off of Tony here is the board, I suppose, could take a have a discussion right now as to what it, what whether amplification means singing into a microphone or not, and I think that you know they could this board could apply that to the Tesoro license. Now, I haven't seen the Tesoro license, but based upon what you've read, you've read acoustic. Um, I took that to be to mean instruments. I, I, I did not hear the word amplification in that license at all. So if this board wants to kind of discuss right now and decide what it means, you know, to evenly across the board, I mean, I, I don't know if that's even possible, but it's just a suggestion so that we're not all back here again in two weeks. I mean, because all, all that does is just beg us to come back and decide I, I the issue. I agree with you. And that's why I said a second ago, but I understand Sean's points too. If you're, if your singer's screaming, then you're going to get complaints. If your singer has an amp on and is singing softly, but has got the volume up, then it's going to be, you got to figure out what loud is. And, you know, somebody mentioned decibels out there. I don't think we're going to walk around with whatever that instrument is. But, you know, you guys are going to have to use your judgment that if, if it's too loud, whether it's singer amplified or singer screaming, if they're complaining, then they got to sing lower. Is that what you're trying to get at? It's Thank you. Yes, right. Yeah. So, right. so, you want to vote for this? That's what. For your information, he spoke. He spoke. You have to give us a chance to respond to it. Are we saying acoustic? No. P 
period, as the town administrator. Yes, we are. No, 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 it is, no, it's exactly, it's going to be read exactly like the previous license. Which is acoustic, no amplification. Correct. Good. Thank you. It's. All right. Um, we have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And we can discuss what acoustic means across the board for everybody, because I really don't think it matters, because if it's too loud singing or too loud amplifying, then it's too loud. So we'll, we'll test, talk. Test it out. We'll see in a year again. Is there a license saying no amplification? No, it doesn't <laughs> say. It just says acoustic. Say. It just says acoustic. Well, and what is license wouldn't say that either. Well, that's not what Mr. Leary asked. Voted. He said. It's been voted. Yeah. It's just discussion. Yeah. All right. We are all uh, moving on, I guess. We're all set. Our license reads the same. Did you read it in the yep. record one more time? Exactly. All right, John, you read it, right? No, I didn't. All right, Tony. Did someone hand me that piece of paper. There it is. So I'm not going to make a motion again, but I'll read what I what I read the first time. So and outturned entertainment from Monday through third through Wednesday, from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., and Thursday through Sunday from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. And the music description would be acoustic music, acoustic guitar music, and singers. And we got rid of the events. As opposed to electric guitar. Right. That's correct. No limit. No it limit. Oh, it guitar, limit. guitars and thought singers. All right. We got rid of that. We just right, made so it we don't same. have a limit of three. Right. Total. All right. There's no limit to three. No limit. There's no. That's correct. That's on the license. It's just guitar. Lorraine, you have guitar and singer. You have it, right? Point of information. I have exactly what Tony just read. You, yeah. Your motion says nothing about no amplification. Right. It says acoustic. It says acoustic. So there's no amplification. We understand that as a as a rule. Right. That's I don't know what acoustic means, so I said acoustic that once before, and I. Right. No imp. All right. I test it. See right. how it goes for the year. Yeah. All right. Okay. I, well, test to see how okay. it is. We'll we'll see. We'll, we, we. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thanks, guys. Next is a discussion and a vote of Clap Road in acceptance of donation of land. Is Laura here? Uh, going to the Mr. Hours. Wisinski's here, I believe, in the hall. It's hard, you know. We got to do a policy. I got to do a policy. Yeah, I, that's I what the problem is. I, I know nothing about. I do. Come stick. Do you? I, we have a music room. Kevin is a. Well, I used to be in a band. I, I, I saw your hands go up at the same time. I said, I just what does it mean? Just no amplified mic in here. Yeah, yeah, you might as well come up. Yeah, you like it. Good evening. So Laura, would you please come up? Okay, what we're doing here is an acceptance of um, about nine acres of land as a gift. <coughs> This, we just saw this for the first time. This is a project that's been approved by the planning board. It's been approved right. subject to your approval. Of the okay. And what it's doing is gifting about a little less than nine acres to the town. To mm -hmm. conservation. Not necessarily, from what I found out today. Well, for conservation purposes. For open space. For open space. But not care of custody of the Conservation Commission. That's not what this write-up said. Is it the it, person? Does it actually spell out in the zoning bylaw that it's going to the Conservation Commission? But it's a tricky piece of land because there are some vertical right. pools very close to it. There's other land that's close to it. So there's there's about six and a half acres of usable land, including all wetlands buffers. It's also eastern box turtle habitat, and that's one of the things that, it's, it's a rare and endangered species. So it's, it's very highly regulated, and I'm not sure how realistic it is to okay. think about putting fields there because of all the permitting, but that's for you guys to decide. 
No, we're not <laughs> talking about fields. Believe me, I love talking about fields, and I wish to talk more about fields on the other property way down the road, but this one is, is not. This is a piece of the, um, the big puzzle that's always presented to us that abuts the Litchfield property. And the, um, I'm not sure if it's Bates Road or whether it's the Carl Litchfield Trail, Carl Pipes Trail. It's the Carl Pipes Trail. I'm just trying to figure out. I see the portion that you're looking to donate. Um, we have so there's going to be development. How many homes? Is that what, what are we looking at with the flexible open uh, space? There's nine. And nine. That's the it. The land yeah. to be donated is back yeah. here. Yeah. Right here. here. That's it right there. That fits that puzzle right there. Do we have one of those down here? Yeah. I, I'm just going to jump. I have it. Yeah, please share. We'll share. It. share. We'll share it. Sorry, Sean, I'll show you here. This is it. In here, you can see where it goes. Fits in. Oh, I can. This is the portion right here. So, Lane is there. Is it landlocked, Laura? Yes. Yes, it is. It, it's, and I don't mean this in a negative way, but I say it's, it's useless as far as, like, buildable. Um, it certainly is, is beneficial to further augment uh, all the conservation property uh, that it surrounds it. Um, and obviously if there's some uh, endangered species, it's certainly a benefit to the town to preserve it. Um, and, um, you know, I have no issues with it, to be candid with you. Is well, there, where is it? Is Mr. Is Mr. It? Mr. Chairman, is right may, may I address yes, the, yes, the, yes, the board? Right. I, I'm Matthew Watsky. Right I'm, I'm Matthew Watsky. I'm here as counsel for Fern Properties, the owner of the property. Uh, so I know that Laura has just provided you with a, a somewhat larger scale plan so you can see the, the, the 8.9 acres that's, that's to the uh, north and west of the subdivision itself. It's a nine lot subdivision proposed on 17 plus acres. And the, the, choice, the choice that the developer had when laying out this subdivision was either a conventional subdivision that would divide this additional 8.9 acres into portions of the conventional lots or to design the subdivision as an open space subdivision where the lots are actually a bit smaller there's somewhat less impervious surface uh, all things that both the planning board and the conservation commission were in favor of but to <coughs> as part of that purposefully carve off this 8.9 acre parcel rather than dividing it into smaller pieces and including it in the individual lots to save it as an open space parcel and convey it either to the town or, or to another entity, but with conservation restrictions on it. The, um, the property, because so much of the town of Situate is regulated by the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program as priority habitat for eastern box turtle. This property late is within the, um, the, the overwintering habitat, priority habitat of the eastern box turtle. And um, the permit that's being issued to the d development um, for the subdivision as a whole includes a requirement that this 8.9 acre parcel, um, regardless of who owns it, will have a permanent conservation restriction on it uh, with the Natural Heritage Program specifically requiring that it be conveyed pursuant to the provisions of Chapter 40, Section 8C to the Conservation Commission for conservation purposes, which in effect makes it conservation land in perpetuity um, with with passive recreation uses perfectly permissible. So th those uses are okay, but it, it is not a property where uh, the Natural Heritage Program's restrictions would allow it to be developed in some way with, uh, with um, clearing of significant areas of the property. So the choice really was conventional subdivision with, with a conservation restriction on this area, but still with the area being owned <coughs> by the individual lot owners, or choice two, um, the open space subdivision with this parcel set aside um, with the, the same restrictions on the use and having that conveyed directly to the town, or we could have done a third alternative, which was to have that separate parcel and convey it to a different entity, a conservation group of some sort. Um, my client's preference stated right up at the very beginning of the 
development proposal was to do it as, as we're proposing now, have it as a separate parcel rather than having the area kept uh, as part of individual lots, have the property made available for, for public access and trails, things like that. Um, and uh, we were assuming that the preference of the town would be to have the town own the property. So uh, that's what we're really looking for is for the selectman's endorsement to that. And when you do something like you're doing, you are zoning up there as one acre, and you're able to build on 30,000 square foot, is that correct? That's roughly correct, yes. Okay. It's part of the flexible open space, though. Right. Don't we give a little relief because that's right. what we're doing, in essence, is that's carving right. out larger lands that's going to the town for conservation purposes, so we're giving them some zoning relief on being able to cluster nine homes. <coughs> that's right. Close. I mean, and, and this is, again, um, it's an interesting because what you're trying to do is put more density in to try to preserve open space. Mm -hmm. You know, begs the question, I'm, no offense, Attorney Watsky, right. whether or not they'd be able to build on the back lot to begin with. But regardless, if they were to try it or somebody were, I mean, you do have an endangered species, the box turtle. That's what it is. That's right. You know, it's, it's certainly something worth preserving ultimately. And perpetuity, so I'd rather go to the town conservation than say some private conservation trust you know who may or may not be worth looking at it but anyway. so okay answer me this John if if we didn't take it are we foregoing tax dollars I mean if they if they left it with the owners and the owners owned it with the same restrictions that the town's gonna own it with would there be tax dollars affiliated with they'd have to I presume re um, redesigned it because this right now would have to belong to an association unless an association has been created which I don't know if it is or not then they'd also what would do is they would probably then deed it to another conservation trust that trust would take it over and, they then, and they don't have to pay taxes on it I think because of their probably if they're drafted as a 501c or something it'd be land of low value you know, anyway yeah. even if it was redesigned very, very because of the wetlands involved nominal so it'd be a nominal difference to yeah. them is it that it is that way right now I imagine right it, and like I said, when you look at the map that we have, um, it's it's another. It's it's a it is a piece to a bigger puzzle that we've filled in pretty well. That's it right there. So is that this on this? Correct. I think so. It is. What's too bad is with these potential nine homes, they would certainly like to have some form of playground down the street. <laughs> I think personally, but you know that's another issue for another day. All right. Any other questions, comments? Well, I guess the only question that I'd want to get resolved is who's going to, is the town going to be the owner of the land or is the Conservation Commission going to be the owner? You said Conservation Commission a second ago. I mean, the one thing that it could be is a bargaining chip for a piece of property later if you had to, tran you know, sometimes you have to Make transfer. It, if it goes, what it would be is town would own it, but with a conservation <clears throat> restriction on right. it. Right. So the only thing I was looking at was in the center, Based on your 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 plan from your engineer, there's some uplands. It looks like at least about half of it. Well, in the oh. middle of it, if I'm not mistaken. My question was: I know at one point we were looking for a uh, stack pipe. Was it standpipe. standpipe? And whether or not we'd be able to get in there, if need be, to put pressure and water. Kevin's not here. That's one thing. But that was the only thing I saw. Or it would be nice to have a cell tower if we needed revenue. But um, but no. But anyway. if, we, if we did find another piece of property, you know, sometimes the town can switch it with something else if the town owns it as opposed to conservation. Owns no, it? once it goes into conservation, you'd have to get a special <laughs> act of legislature That's right. um, to get it out of conservation. So every every parcel of town that goes into conservation restrictions, you cannot take it back out. And then, frankly, it's extremely difficult to get the legislature to turn around and say, you know what, we're going to take it out of conservation. Okay. So let me ask a question to Trisha, if you don't mind. Is would by by doing this tonight, is it going in the care and custody of conservation, or is it yes, not? Yes, it is. It's yeah. for conservation purposes. I yeah. think there are opportunities for the board to discuss that with other parcels, but because you already have an endangered species there and it's already so wet, I don't think it makes sense to do it in this case. I agree. Um, the Conservation Commission has already accepted it, which might have been a little premature before this board acted, but um, I think in this case 
it makes sense for it to be under their custody. Okay. All right. This might be a silly question, but is there any burden on the town for the endangered species? No. Okay. Turtle hater. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Those are, those heard, a, heard a story. A motion. motion? I'll take a motion. Right. Right. No, not turtles. If it was clovers, it would be. Oh. Yeah. Merely to keep it motion. as open space. So I'll move to accept the is, conveyance uh, of 8.9 acres of okay. land at 214 Clap Road on behalf of the town of Situate. Second. I have a motion. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Thank Gentlemen, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks for staying, Laura. Moving on hey. under our next. Uh, I want my map back. Oh, okay. uh, next is the discussion and vote for the polling hours, Colors the annual here, town election. I think we got, yeah. Kathy's been sitting here patiently. I think we got a letter from the governor Go ahead, giving us his George. blessing yes. for our May 31st yes. election. That took a while, Kathy, didn't it? Yes, it did, because it had to go guy. through the House of Representatives, then it had to go through the Senate, and yeah. then it made its way back to the governor's desk. Sat so. on his desk for a few days. And well, he was down in He's busy doing Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic on vacation. Or, but yes, we're all set for the 31st. We have one contested race on the ballot, which is library trustee. It's vote for two for three years, and there's three people running. We have two incumbents, Karen Canfield and Chris Meraki, and Virginia Ayers is a new, the new person that is running for that position. And we have the two non-binding questions. So other than that, I felt that the polling hours, you know, could be set from 8 to 5 p.m. with no problem. I expect the absentee ballots in three weeks before the election. So if polling hours are a problem for a few people, they could certainly come in and vote over the counter absentee. And they're available when, until when? Usually three weeks before the election is by law. Okay. I'm hoping I get, to, I get them a little sooner. Up um, until they've been ordered. Okay. So. Move to approve the polling hours for the annual town election to be held on Saturday, May 31st, 2014. Be set for the hours 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Second. I have a motion a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Kathy, thank, thank you. you. Now to vote the annual town election warrant. Move to approve the situate town warrant for the 2014 annual town election to be held on Saturday, May 31st, 2014. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay. Now can we discuss um, some dates for our annual retreat? All right. Um, what are you looking at? Under new business. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I can only speak for myself, but I think I'm around all the time. It's something we've done. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what have we done this, two or three years? I'm available every day. Yeah, I'm so a big loser. Be the fifth. <laughs> I'm, anyway. I'm sorry? To be the fifth. Yeah. Real time goes by quick. How about in two weeks? I think Rick Murray's just gone for a few days. Trisha's yeah. gone. Rick's gone. All right. No, no. Get, so get, why don't um, we, can I we, can work can around the throw board. out like three dates and then we can email back? I yeah. unfortunately do not know my schedule. So are we looking at weekends? Yeah, That's Saturday. what I was just going to say. Saturday morning might work the Saturday best. morning like 7 or something? Yes. It works because of scheduling. And I know a lot of people. I'm like between the and kids' events and everything else. And that could be May or June. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what would you, what, you guys, what is the you time guys are with the young, you know, the baseball and soccer and everything, what, does, do those programs end no. in June? No. They, and then they go right into a summer program. So. Are we looking more at June right now? Well, yeah. Tricia, you come yeah. back when? June would be better. June, how about right. Saturday morning in June? Uh, June 6th is graduation Friday night. So how about a Saturday morning? I Do think May 31, June 7, June 14, May 31 is not going to work very well. May 31. It's the election, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, Can't do that. At 7 a.m.? <laughs> oh, the polls are open at 8. That's going to be an hour. <laughs> um, so and then June seventh, I think the sixth is graduation. If uh, I don't, I don't know if that matters. Is that the party? Wh all night party is. Um, do that one. You, yeah, you'll be there. So you'll be up all night the night before. Fourteen, right. twenty-one, twenty-eight. Right. Okay. So we'll email mail. Okay. All right. So I'll email the date June mm -hmm. dates, not the seventh, and we'll see what the consent. We're away the fifteenth and the twenty-first. So <laughs> I'm getting my schedule. Does that work for you? We're gone the 15th and 21st. 
You are. You're not available. through the 21st. So you can't so do the 21st. My preference would be the 7th and the 28th. Well, 7th right, would 20th. be tough to Either one's good for me, then. 20th is on Saturday. 28th, 28th. Okay. Got a little work. I got to check, but that. Yeah. that 28th, okay. I don't think I can do the 14th. Okay. That's all. If you could check, that'd be great. One of those dates. All right. I'll send out a confirmation just so you can double check. That would be great. Okay. Thank you. Other business, I'll start with you, John. If sure, quickly, right. I just want to say that um, anybody driving down Jericho Road looks great. They are tearing up the sidewalk. They're putting in the bike path, and they've got cur uh, granite curbing. Um, I have to tell you, it's, it looks, looks better already, and I think it's going to be really ex well accepted by a lot of people who use that. And so just um, I don't know how, what the timing of it is. I'm assuming another month, but I think we'll have it certainly by the end of June, and I, I think people will be so pleasantly uh, surprised. It's a really great um, project so I'm looking forward to that the other thing I was going to say is I want to give kudos to Donna Bangert and all the people involved in the ship shape day uh, again another phenomenal event the town coming out and cleaning up uh, I don't know what the tonnage was I'd like to know what we have I don't know Patricia if you have that information available right now but um, again it's when the town comes together cleans up and it looks like there are more people involved and maybe there was less debris I don't know but it just seemed like there was a lot of cleanlier areas and um, just good for this town. Um, it takes three days to clear up the bags. I we went, get that much. I went down. <coughs> and um, the wind didn't help. So we had to put a crew on overtime to get them. And I will say them, today when I was driving down Driftway, um, obviously somebody was hired to go and pick stick um, the side of the golf course, but they're getting all the debris from all the stuff that flies off trucks and cars and picks it up. I mean, it, that turns into a real mm -hmm. pit in the town because things are flying off left and right. And I'm glad to see that because it, it is the gateway into the town as well as the, the way to leave town. But um, aside from that, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Jump over to Marty. Yeah, I just have uh, uh, North Situate um, is having, a, on May 10th, they're having a kind of like a little block party down there uh, from 2 to 5 p.m. They're going to have things for kids and um, they're going to have a wine tasting. And it uh, should be a good event, hopefully to welcome spring finally. That's on uh, May 10th, 2 to 5. Who's sponsoring that? Um, it's the, it's, Ann, is it the, is it the Merchants Association? No, no, no actually, this was the brainchild of um, Tracy. Colomico, yeah. Yes, at the. Um, Still Waters. Still Waters, and I think she's uh, Jack from Wilbur's, and they're trying to get some people, young right. people into North Into Involved, yeah. They don't need an event permit for that, do they? Trisha, if they're just out in the, that parking area there. I don't think so, no. No, okay. But they'll have face painting and different things. It should be a good event. Hopefully we'll have good weather. That's, a, that's all I have. Uh, Tony, do you have anything? Um, not, not much, just a couple things. Um, just people beware. It's uh, Spring is going to come eventually, and you've got baseball season starting and soccer season starting, so drive slowly around those fields. Um, the high school baseball and lacrosse seasons are in full bloom. Baseball team's on a little roll here, so if you have an afternoon, swing over and watch a game. Um, and the only other note is this Friday is First Friday in the harbor, so um, go down there and enjoy the festivities. It's always busy and happening. I think Friday's supposed to be a beautiful day. Um, so uh, go enjoy it and help the local uh, merchants. And they're going to have music at TK's, right, on the sidewalk. Yes, they are, right? John, anything else? You're all set. Acoustic, yeah. Um, I was just going to say, I wanted to thank Ann Burbank. She uh, just provided us that the South Shore Coalition of the uh, MAPC, which is the Met Metropolitan Area Planning Council, is having a legislative breakfast on Friday, May 9th, uh, 2014, obviously. From 8.30 till 10 at the Situate Maritime. That's at 119 Edward Foster Road. All are welcome. There are going to be local state legislators there, um, elected officials and uh, various people working on various boards uh, to have an opportunity to meet and discuss the issues uh, related to transportation, climate control, economic development, and other issues. So um, if you're interested, um, do RSVP, uh, South Shore Coalition, um, uh, Ms. Torres Colain. Uh, her phone number is 617-933-0735, and um, just want to raise that. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Okay. John, I have two quick things sure. that, I could, that I forgot. Um, first is I met with Representative Cantwell last Thursday to go over some items. I think we've been going back and forth on lifting the use restriction at the Situate Harbor Community Building. Um, we wrote in August to file special legislation 
Representative Cantwell had had some information in November that MBTA could just do it as of right. Um, Representative Cantwell informed me last Thursday it does need a special act of the legislature, as we originally requested. So he is working expeditiously to have that happen now. And he's working with Jim Toomey. The other thing that I neglected to mention in my report is Mr. Bangett attended a conference in Philadelphia last week on solar arrays on landfills, and he provided me with this. The town's officially an EPA case study. That document I just gave you can was I, issued by the EPA. Can I interrupt you for one yeah. second? Did you say he was invited to Yes. Go? All right, he was invited to go, and he was invited to speak. Yeah, well, he was right. a presenter. That's right. 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 So right. the blue, the color version looks much nicer, but um, this went to several peoples on the EPA website uh, about the town's landfill. Um, on the driftway. Can we put that on the web? Is, if it's not already yep, on the website? Yeah, I can post it on the website. Nice. I just got it today, John. Yeah. So. Trying to recall, I had a brief conversation with Al, and that's why Al wasn't at town meeting and so forth. He, yeah, was, he was very busy. He and his wife were traveling, and he told me how many people are in attendance and where they were from, who they were, and so forth. But it was pretty impressive. I think he's. Um, if he's not an expert in this sort of stuff, he's close to it by now. So. And, and I, and I thanked him for that, taking the time to do that. All right, finally, let's see. I don't see any correspondence. Can I have a motion to accept the minutes of March 25th? Move to accept the minutes of March 25th executive session on April 8th, 2014. I have a motion and a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now a motion to adjourn and we'll be signing documents. Uh -huh. executive, executive session, session, is it? All right, it, that's, yes. We'll be going into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, and if it was done in an open meeting, it would have, could have, would have, in my opinion, have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body. So I have declared that we do this. We will not be for, for, per, uh, for per, consideration of purposes, ex exchange, lease, and value of real property. Well, like I just said, I feel if we did an open session, it would not, it would have a detrimental effect <coughs> on the position of the town. So it is for the fire. So oh, yes, fire I'm, I'm sorry. and for real estate, Clap Road. All right, it's not here. Okay, for fire in the real, in real estate on Clap Road, like the town administrator just said, we will not be returning into regular session. Move to adjourn and sign documents. I have a motion and a second. Second. Okay, Mr. Mr. Vignani, roll Aye. call vote. Mr. Yes. O'Toole? Aye. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Denny? Yes. Good night, folks. Thank you. So, uh,